this is maybe one of the most frequent questions we get. It's, will the Wyoming tailbag prevent my horse from protecting itself from flies? Do this. Well, welcome to the Biomain Scoop. Um, quarantine edition, I guess. We've just been getting a bunch of questions about summer care tips. Um, and I think it's primarily because a lot of people, I guess, for sad circumstances, are spending a lot of time with their horses, you know, as opposed to maybe the usual amount of time that we can. So um, we've been getting just a flood of tips about um you know summer care and we were just going to go through kind of the frequently asked questions that we've been getting cool so the first one is uh how to prevent my horse from rubbing the top section of its tail this one i mean i guess doesn't technically relate directly to summer but um as you're more active with your horses and as they're getting sweaty and, and stuff like that i can see some special uh, irritation happening during the summer, what would be your tip for preventing the horse from rubbing the top of its tail? This is always an issue, but it's more prevalent in the summer months. You get a warmer climate, you get a, uh, the flies are out. Typically, things to look for when your horse is rubbing the top of its tail, uh, if it's a gelding or a stud horse, make sure they don't have what's called a bean um, up, in their, uh, up in their sheath area that causes an irritation up in in there and they feel like rubbing the top of their tail gives them a little bit of relief. Um, If it's a mare, really mare, gilding, stud, whatever, make sure up underneath in their flank area is clean, free of debris, free of dust, sand, anything. There's nothing up there irritating them. And also underneath their tail, clean out underneath their tail. Um, Make sure that there's nothing uh, really no filth, no debris that's dried in there, um, causing them to want to rub. If you've ruled that out and they're still rubbing, a great example, a neighbor of mine has a mare that he's taken every tip that I've given him to prevent this mare from rubbing her tail, and she still rubbed it right down to the skin and still rubs to where she's rubbing it raw and it's bleeding and it's in bad shape. That mare in particular some things that will happen are um, flies and gnats will get in that tail and tend to, you know, bite or nest in there. And it causes in that, you know, deep underneath those, those hairs down by the roots, they'll get in there and kind of make a home there. Um, Fly spray them every day, multiple times a day, if you can, especially those troublesome areas like the top of their tail. Um, But with this guy, the best thing I could tell him to do, he's done everything that we've thought of putting a fly sheet on uh, that covers the top of the tail. Everything um, is wire the pen, the entire pen with hot wire. Uh, And every time she goes to rub, she gets a little pop and occasionally, you know, eventually she won't go to rub that. Um, Some horses are just rubbers. They rub out of boredom. They rub just to rub. Uh, If you feel like you've ruled out every reason causing that mare or that horse to rub and they're rubbing just to rub that's when i result with like stringing up a few strands of hot wire around their pen to prevent them from rubbing Um, because really it's a harm to themselves once they get rubbed down to the to the nothing rubbed down through the skin and it turns into a wound well then it's really going to attract flies and really going to attract infection and and it can become a major problem so yeah, um, that's, why, that's why we recommended doing the hot wire because we want to prevent her from causing further injury and further infection. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say the hot wire, you know, as a last resort is just for their own good because um, they'll, I mean, they'll learn that uh, behavior quickly. You know, they'll learn to stop oh, yeah. behavior quickly. You know, it's not like you're going to be, they're going to get shocked for the rest of their lives, you know. No, they get shocked once or twice and they realize, huh, I better not go next to that fence. Yeah, exactly. So, so, and the only time they get shocked is not like you're going in there and chasing them around trying to prod them. The only time they get shocked is when they make the choice to push on that fence. So they yeah. learn from it, and it's humane. And you know, there can be an argument that it's inhumane, but I'll argue with that person because I feel like it's humane. So yeah, and 
like you said, the alternative is something that could be much worse. So yeah, cool. That's uh, I feel like we got that one. Yeah, covered. Um, how to protect? Let's see. How to protect the top of the tail when the tail bag is attached? So I, I mean, I think this one goes into more of obviously you're going to be riding a lot more during the summer with the tail bag. Like that horse is going to be more active, um, and you know, a lot more knots and stuff will happen above the tail bag. We've covered this a little bit, but maybe a quick refresher wouldn't hurt. Yeah. So our tail bag, as you guys know, applies from the tail, the bottom of the tailbone down. So it's essentially the last, the bottom three quarters of that tail. Um, so from where that tail comes out of the horse's hind end down to its tailbone is exposed. Um, some things that you can do. One of our tips uh, was to wrap where that tail bag attaches wrap that with a with like a stretchy sticky type uh vet wrap is what it's called uh, again that wasn't a tip that we came up with i got that from a friend but that's a good way to secure that tail bag on and prevent the tail from coming out um, and causing uh, a lot of knots in that tail but say uh, just in their pen, how do you protect the top of that tail, say from being sun bleached or even rubbed, stuff like that. Um, things that we've done, biggest thing is keep them shaded. If you can keep your horse undercover for as long as possible, that's the thing to do. Um, also, uh, find a fly sheet that has a, that's breathable, a summer type fly sheet. I would recommend one that's UV protectant because even if with a fly sheet on, that sun, if they're out in the sun, that sunlight can penetrate through that uh, uh, through that sheet and cause um, not necessarily damage, but cause some some uh, sun bleaching and fading of the color of the hair, the coat, the mane and tail. Um, so find a, a fly sheet that covers the top of the tail, uh, also that's UV protectant. And and other than that, I I apply conditioner. Obviously, when we prior to putting a tail bag on, we soak that tail in conditioner. And in the summer months, especially, I'll apply conditioner above the tail bag also just to help keep that tail from drying out and becoming brittle in the warmer climate. Cool. Um, okay, on to the next one is, what are your tips about preventing electrical tape from melting on to the horse's mane or tail uh, in the summer? Um, don't leave it in so long. If you, when you go to take out those braids and you notice that that, that uh, the, the electrical tape has left kind of a gunky film, uh, which will happen in the heat. Um, you're leaving, try not to leave it in too long. Right now, like we, I, on my own horses, I recommend seven to 10 days. Right now we're at about six to seven days just to prevent that from happening. And we're riding them a lot. They're sweating every time we ride them. And so you get that sweat and those salts coming out of their, coming out of their skin into their mane and tail. Um, that damages that hair if it's not cleansed and, and conditioned. And so we're redoing them a lot more frequently. Um, but I would say if you're getting gunk um, left in the manes or tail from electrical tape, do them a little more frequently. And it may even be take the tape out if the braids are in good shape, pull the tape off, retape it mm -hmm. without redoing the braids, without re brushing all that. Just take the tape out and uh, put new tape in. Yeah, that's what I was going to recommend. If you just pinch above where the tape is to keep your braid in place, then you can just replace that tape really quick. Yeah, it's super, yeah, it's, and and those braids have been in for a few days, so that hair is already kind of secure. You know what I mean? Those braids aren't going to pop right out. So if you take that tape off and have the uh, new tape handy, you can take the old off and retape it real quick. We've done that a lot. Yeah, and we've been working on um, developing our own braiding tape um specifically for securing the braids obviously with what's going on right now that's been kind of thrown into a bit of a commotion and uncertainty but hopefully eventually we'll have um not hopefully eventually we will have our own line of braiding tape specifically um for securing the braids but one other tip that i thought of would be basically i mean just try you know a few different brands of electrical tape as well um in the meantime yeah, each each one he uses a different you know maybe a different type of adhesive some are a little thicker some are a little thinner um so maybe don't buy the electrical tape in bulk buy one roll at a time try it if that's the kind that you like remember what it is and buy that from then on 
Yeah, for sure. So that's a really good point. Okay, uh, next is will basically having a longer, thicker mane um, cause your horse to overheat? Um, I hate to just give it a hard no, but that horse naturally is able to regulate its body temperature. Mm-hmm. Um, and really the point of the main was to, you know, and not to get in the creation of horses and that, but the main point of the main really is to, uh, help assist keeping the neck warm. There's a lot of vital, um, arteries that run through the neck. And that was the main, that really, if you ask any equine professional, um, they know that the main, the main's purpose in the creation of horses was to help keep those arteries and those veins warm and operating. So that being said, Chrome, let's take Chrome for instance, huge mane, thick as can be the thickest mane we've got. And she lives in St. George, Utah. And in the summer it gets up to 112, 115 degrees. She's in shade most of the time, but she's been here for how many years and she's still alive and going strong. One thing that I, so no, a long, thick mane or long, thick hair won't make your horse overheat in the summer. Mm -hmm. That being said, we're talking about long, thick mane and tail. If your horse has a big, uh, full winter coat in the summer, Yes, you may have some overheating issues, and that's something you need to address, you know, with your veterinarian, find out why they're not shedding off and that. But I'm going to assume we're talking about long, thick mane and tail. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing to help, if that's a concern of yours, one thing to help assist in that, in keeping that horse cool, is use braids. Because by using braids, it's not one big, thick, almost like blanket draped over the neck. You've got uh, room for air and a breeze to to uh, pass through there and cool the neck so no i i personally don't feel like a big thick mane and tail um is going to make your horse overheat in the summer months yeah and if you have a horse that has a, a really long and really thick mane uh, we've demonstrated in our how to properly braid video how you can braid the mane but then fold those braids up and tape them together so um well, yeah to where they're only hanging three, four inches from the top of their hairline. Yeah. So if you're in a really hot climate and you're worried about that, we, I'd recommend checking out our (laughs) properly um, braid the main video on uh, our blog. Um, Okay. The best way to treat a sunburned coat. Oh, don't let it get sunburned in the first place. Um, But how to treat it, keep them out of the sun. Obviously just imagine you, if you had a sunburn, the last thing you want to do is walk outside shirtless and sit in the sun. (laughs) <laughs> keep them keep them shaded keep them in a cool place if you can while they're that un- i mean i'm assuming like they're sunburnt and they're uncomfortable stay off of them uh don't be brushing them don't be don't be riding them don't be doing anything that you know if you had a sunburn you wouldn't want to wear a tight shirt or have somebody cinch a belt around your shoulders or something real tight like a cinch would be stay off of them um uh, I personally would cold hose them down four or five times a day. Just whenever I had time, try and help cool them off because you notice too, when we get sunburned, our body internal temp rises. Also, we feel hot all the time. Um, so try and, but you also wouldn't go jump in an ice bath cause that'd be two extremes and, and very uncomfortable. So I would try and get a cool, cool hose and hose them off frequently. Try and bring them some relief. Um, look for um i don't know that i'd lather their whole body in a in a cream or a serum but i would look for maybe a spray that contains aloe something that really helps uh treat sunburns and just keep them shaded it's one of those things that if you've if you've allowed them to get sunburn it just takes a few days for that to uh to self-heal um the things you can do to help that are keep them shaded cold hose them if you can and if it doesn't cause them discomfort, if they're trying to get away from you while you're hosing them off, stop and uh, and find something, uh, a spray type topical treatment to spray on their body to help bring them some relief and just wait it out. And then 
some people, I mean, there's different opinions on fly sheets, but a UV protectant fly sheet would, would help out too. I mean, not yeah, help out I don't know especially, but. Yeah, I don't know that I put it on them until that sunburn and that and that real um, touchy coat because they're going to be touchy and sensitive. I would wait for that sensitivity to wear off mm -hmm. before I put a, a fly sheet on them. Uh, same reason, I mean, just like I keep referring to a person getting sunburn. If you get sunburn, you don't want to wear a shirt. Like it hurts. Anything that touches you hurts. Yeah. Um, so wait to put anything on them like that until that sensitivity is subsided. Cool. Okay. Do you do anything different when caring for their hair in the summer months? Uh, yeah, just more frequently. Like I said before, um, we are washing and shampooing, well, washing and conditioning their manes and tails a little more frequently instead of seven to 10 days. We're like five to seven days. Every single one of them gets done. Uh, we've got them on a scheduled day and that day every week they get done. We may fudge by a day, but we're fudging earlier than, excuse me, earlier than later. Um, we go through a lot more conditioner, um, because that dry heat in the climate that we're at can really suck the moisture out of hair. And so we're every couple days, every few days, we're just getting a handful of conditioner and rubbing it through the braids of the mane and also taking tail bags off, not redoing the tails every day. Um, but every two or three days we take the tail bags off, soak that tail and conditioner and throw the tail bag back on just to help keep that hair soft, supple. And moisturized right on. and this kind of goes along with it but um, how do you prevent the hair from becoming dry and brittle during the summer yeah just that just follow that routine more conditioner um, condition the braids in the main and like in the winter I don't I don't typically put conditioner in the in the main very frequently because it doesn't absorb as fast and it doesn't dry as fast mm -hmm. and so if I put conditioner in and even let them sit for a few hours, then go put them in their pen and they roll in the sand or something that just turns into, you know, those braids just get coated in sand because that moist, that uh, conditioner hasn't fully absorbed. It's different in the summer. Um, that hair is already a lot more dry because of the climate and the heat. And so it's more apt to um, absorb that conditioner absorbs a lot better during the summer months. So, to prevent the hair from becoming dry and brittle and having a lot of breakage, use a lot more conditioner and just use those, uh, our tips more frequently in the summer months. Perfect. Um, this is maybe one of the most frequent questions we get. It's, will the Wyoming tail bag prevent my horse from protecting itself from flies? No. Nope. A lot, but. It won't prevent your horse from protecting itself from flies. That horse is still able to. So what we've done is we've taken that tail and we braided it and we put it in a tail bag that measures essentially just the same length as, as the horse's tail if it were to be trimmed when it reaches his fetlocks. Mm -hmm. That varies an inch or two, maybe a couple inches, um, depending on the, the length of the horse's tailbone because a recommendation is attach it just below the tailbone. But for the majority of horses, that tail bag is, you know, four to six, four to seven inches off the ground. Uh, we've put the little whippers on the end of the tail bag that act similar to how strands of hair uh, would act. And when they go to swat flies, they don't have a big open tail that goes to swat flies. They have a, a big, thick tail bag but they're still able to swap flies and they're still able to utilize their tail to protect them against flies the big bonus of using a tail bag during the summer months especially during fly season is every time that horse swishes its tail to hit flies if it's not protected in a tail bag you run the risk of that tail catching on something or that tail being broken off if you leave a tail untail bagged unbraided and out of a tail bag all summer you will have less tail by the end of the summer it's just a fact that's the way it goes if you sit there and swish a tail all day and all night long left and right left and right smacking it against fences even not even if the horse hits a fence or a barn or a wire or anything if it swats against its own body long enough and hard enough you're going to have some breakage to that hair it's just what happens so what the tail bag does is it helps protect that. The tail bag takes the damage, 
while protecting the tail on the inside. And that tail bag allows that horse to utilize its tail, protecting itself from flies the same way that a tail would. Sorry, that was a really long winded version of it, but. No, I thought that was good. And the, uh, the other thing I was going to say is, like you said, the alternative to not using tail bag is one, you're on the risk of your horse basically breaking off the majority of its tail, which is going to ruin its effectiveness of swatting. And the other thing was whether your horse uses a tail bag or not, the, the swishing protecting the horse from flies is no, <clears throat> is no, um, what's the word? No substitute for, you know, using fly sprays and, and keep oh, yeah. down in other ways. So whether you're, you're not eliminating fly, that horse isn't eliminating flies by swishing its tail. It's just essentially if a, te- if a horse, if a fly lands on a horse's leg, it swishes its tail to get it away. Well, guess what? The fly comes right back. Yeah. So anyways, regardless of whether you're using a tail bag, like you should be, I mean, your primary defense against flies should, should intensify if you're worried enough about the horse being exactly. able to use its tail bag. To yeah, pre- good point. Um, okay. Do you rinse or leave in the conditioner after washing and braiding the tail during uh, the summer? Uh, I leave it in. So my tail routine is I'll get the tail, I'll wash it. If after I wash it, I feel like once it's dry, I can brush through it, no problem with just some detangler. I'll just leave it alone and let it dry. If after I wash it, it's really tangled, say you left it in the tail bag way too long. If that tail's really tangled up and snarled and naughty and just in a in bad shape, I'll soak it in conditioner. Right after I wash it and rinse it out, I'll put a bunch of conditioner in it and then go tie the horse up and allow it to dry. What that does is when you go back to brush it, that conditioner soften up that tail and it's helped to, when you go to brush, it's, for lack of a better word, it's lubricated those knots and those snarls and helps you be able to brush your own. Like I said, if the tail's in good shape after I, after I shampooed it and, and, and uh, cleaned it, I won't put conditioner on. I'll just let it dry and then I'll brush. So let's assume that tail is in good shape. I brushed, I, I shampoo it. It looks in good shape. I know I can brush it out really easily with some, with some detangler after it dries. So I wash it, tie the horse up, let the tail completely dry. Then I'll come back, spray some detangler in, brush it, braid it, secure it with tape. So I've got a good solid braid in that tail and then I'll soak it in conditioner. The reason I don't put conditioner on before I braid is once you've conditioned it, if you go to braid it, it's slick, that hair slides. When you go to secure your braid with the ta- with the tape, that tape can't adhere to the tail. It just slides right off. You can't keep the braid in. So I'll brush it, braid it, then soak that braid in conditioner, then put the tail bag on. Um, and is that, I mean, you're doing that year round, really. You're not changing that. Yeah, I do that. You're, that's my routine year round. Um, the difference in the summer is every two or three days. So say I've got that done, condition, put the tail bag on in two or three days. Like we ride them every day, but in two or three days, say that was on a Monday, on a Wednesday, maybe a Thursday, I'll take that tail out of the tail bag. I'll take the tail bag off. I'll soak that braid and conditioner again, throw the tail bag back on. Gotcha. Yeah. And then the following Monday, I'll take that tail out, wash it, brush it, braid it, condition it put a tailbag on cool so the difference between winter or fall and spring and summer in the summer and the hot months every two or three days i'll take that tail bag off put conditioner on it put the tail bag back on i won't take the braid out or anything i'll just soak it in conditioner and put the tail bag back on you're still you're doing redoing the whole process every seven to ten days but every few days you're just adding more conditioner correct cool and if you follow that routine like just doing it every few days, just with the conditioner. I mean, I mean, you do that. You're done in 30 seconds. Just. Oh yeah. It takes, it literally takes, it takes longer to wash the conditioner off your hands when you're done than it does take tailbag off, put conditioner on, put tailbag back on. Yeah. So it takes no time at all and do it when you don't have to make a special trip for it. Next time you go feed your horse, 
Take a bottle of conditioner with you. When you throw hay in there and he's eating, take the tailbag off, soak conditioner on it, put the tailbag back on, and feeding, instead of feeding taking you five minutes, it took you six minutes. Yeah. And it pays off when you go to redo that tail in a week or 10 days. You're like, wow, this is in great shape. Yeah, I mean, we talked earlier about how to, you know, keep hair from getting brittle and, and dry, and I think that little routine might pay off more than anything, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. Last question. How can you prevent sun bleaching to the main? And this person also asked, I bought a fly sheet that covers the neck solely to protect the mane from bleaching, but it's still showing some signs of damage. Um, I would revert back to kind of what we talked about with fly sheets. Find one that's UV protectant, um, for that exact reason. The point in putting a sheet on their neck is if your point in putting a sheet on their neck is to prevent that mane from sun bleaching, make sure you've got a sheet that is highly rated for sun protection. Mm -hmm. um, my guess, I haven't bought them in years because we've got ours undercover most of the time. We don't really need the fly sheets um, for, for sun protection, um, but it's going to be a little more pricey than your typical cheap fly sheet because you're getting a little more added protection. Um, but find one that is UV protected. I don't have one to recommend. Um, but that's my recommendation is find one that's UV protectant, um, and, and rated high enough for UV protection. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I mean, if you, if this person did buy one that claimed to be UV protectant, like, take some before and after photos, show that it's not working and contact the company and ask, you know, what they can do for you and, and try one till you can find one that, uh, that works for you because, um, anyways, there's nothing worse than having that main sun bleached and ruining all that progress you made over fall and winter feeding biomain, doing the routine. And then just to have, you know, some fly sheet that didn't live up to its promises. Um, it's definitely disappointing. So yeah, well, and a lot of people too, they'll put those fly sheets on or those or those sleeves on the necks, and they think, okay, I can like you can set it and forget it. Check that mane frequently, because that horse may be rubbing when you're not around and you're not seeing it. That uh, that sheep may be rubbing them itself when they're leaning down to eat and graze. Check that mane if it's out of sight. Meaning if you can't see the main, you need to check it more frequently than you would if you can see it. Yeah. Um, because there can be, I don't know how many times, like even in the winter, how many times have you pulled off a winter blanket and found spots on the horse's chest or under his belly where it's rubbed and rubbed the hair completely off down to skin? And you're like, man, I had no idea this was rubbing him. Same, uh, same thing applies with fly sheets. Check their coats, check their manes and tails frequently to make sure that that isn't causing more damage than it is protection. Yeah, because, yeah, it's a good point that it might cause irritation wanting them to rub or itself might just be rubbing it raw. So. Well, and it could be if it's done up too tight, it could be causing them extra heat. It could be causing them to sweat, which causes them discomfort. And they, you know, at all, any discomfort results in rubbing. Yeah. Cool. Well, any other questions, Bruce, that we missed? Okay. Well, I think that was it. Um, do you have any other general comments about summer care or man, I just, it's exciting that we're able to be out and riding horses and, and cleaning them up more frequently with the good temperatures. Just be safe and make sure that, that you're taking care of, taking care of them, um, washing, shampooing them frequently and get in a, make it a habit and get in a routine of doing it every seven to 10 days. And, you'll be really impressed by the end of the year and the end of the summer, how, uh, how much better your manes and tails look. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions as usual, um, send them to us. We try our best to consolidate them and, um, come up with the common ones. And we're going to be doing more of these calls to, um, answer these questions for you. But, um, yeah, until then, I guess like comment, subscribe, wherever you're watching or listening to this. Um, we appreciate your support. Oh, I would, I just wanted to say something too about um, the time we're in right now. We just cannot thank you enough for um, those of you that have, you know, continued to 
be club members or place orders with us. We know that this is an unprecedented time. A lot of people have lost jobs. And anyways, we appreciate any orders or, or any, um, you know, attention or, or orders that, that y'all have given um, to us. And a good point too on our club deal. If you're a club member and you don't want to be, you don't want to quit your subscription, but you know, times are tough. I know a lot of people are out of work. There's options that we have available. Like if you wanted to put a subscription on hold for a period of time, we're flexible. We're good that way. Give us a call. We're happy to talk with you. Message us on any of the social platforms and we'll see what we can do to, to help. And anyways, that's uh, I, I, I understand that there's, there's certain needs for, in certain seasons for each, for every horse and every person and, and just make sure that your, your family and your loved ones are taken care of and, and you're doing the best to take care of your horse. And if, and if uh, reducing their, their, uh, their cost is one of those things that needs to happen, everyone in the Western, uh, not even Western, but equine industry understands that. So it is a community and it is a, it is a tight knit community and uh, we help each other where we can. So, Cool. Well, until next time, thanks for listening. Thanks. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so don't hesitate to comment on our videos, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.